Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Hollow Steam. I'm Miss Emily. Just a quick reminder, if you are looking for StoryCraft, StoryCraft is taking a short, short break this month. It will be back in November. Trust me, I like doing my crafts too much to let it go. But we decided it would be really fun to take a quick break for October and do some Hollow Steam, which means I'll be showing you different Steam activities that you can do at home and also reading a book that goes along with the activity. And if you guys remember last week, we had some kits available at the library for you to pick up to be able to do the activity as well. This week is no different. I have put together another kit. So make sure you stop by the library starting today. Today is Tuesday, October 12th. And pick up your Hollow Steam kit for this week. These are while supplies last, unfortunately. So I recommend if you really want to, get here early and grab it. The good news this week also is, is that these items that are included maybe items that you have at home so if you don't make it to get a kit you probably have these items at home so this week in your kit you have your um sorry we have an explanation of what's going on in this week's activity which i will explain as i do it and then as just like last week i have all of the steps that you guys need to do so there's that, and then also this week in your kit you will get two straws, and you will get two pieces of cardstock paper. So this is just plain paper, but it's a little bit thicker, so it works out really well for this activity. You're going to need to provide some crayons or markers or colored pencils, something to draw and color and decorate those two cardstock pieces, and you'll need to provide some tape. So, before I show you what the activity is, let's get started and read our Halloween book, which today is going to be Sheep Trick or Treat. And this is written by Nancy Shaw and illustrated by Margot Apple. So, Sheep Trick or Treat. As the Halloween moon rises, sheep are fixing up disguises. They make a mask with glue and tape and a monster shoot with a excuse me and a monster suit with a shiny cape. Sheep snip and sew and drape a costume for a giant ape. Sheep shape wool in pointy clumps to make a dinosaur with bumps. Sheep rip scraps for mummy wraps. Sheep Pose in spooky clothes. Sheep take lanterns arm in arm. They set off for a nearby farm. In the woods they give three cheers. A sleepy wolf puts up his ears. Sheep amble to the dell. They reach the barn and ring the bell. Sheep bleat, trick or treat. Animals give them things to eat. The horses' treats go in with thumps, apples, oats, and sugar lumps. Spiders give a dried up fly. Sheep decide to pass it by. Sheep stop by the chicken coops. Chicken gives, excuse me, chickens give them fresh eggs. Oops, they dropped some of the eggs, oh no. Cows offer hay and clover. Now the trick-or-treating's over. Back through the woods, the sheep's parade. It's dark, but they are not afraid. Rustling noises come from trees. Is someone there or just a breeze? Wolves peek out from hiding places. Wolves see scary, lit-up faces. Wolves skedaddle. Sheep slip past. They settle down with treats at last. Oh my goodness, how scary. The sheep went trick-or-treating and then found some scary wolves in the woods. But the wolves were just as scared as, excuse me, the wolves were just as scared of them in their Halloween costumes. So the sheep made it home safe and sound in the end to enjoy all of their Halloween treats. 
So I'm calling today's experiment a treat for your eyes because today I'm going to show you guys how to do an optical illusion. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of this optical illusion and then I'll show you how to do it. So my first one here, if you can see, I've got a bat on this side of the cardstock and I've got a moon on this side. And what I'm gonna do, if I hold the straw between my palms and then if I move my palms back and forth, my paper spins. So what you wanna do is hold the cardstock right at your eye level, so you're looking straight at it, and then if you spin the cardstock, and I'm hoping you can kinda of see that actually on the video, if you spin it, you start to see both pictures at the same time, so it looks like the bat is flying in front of the moon. You can play with how fast or how slow. There we go, that's a good one. Because sometimes if you do it too fast, you can't see. If you do it too slow, you can't see. But this one is kind of right in the middle. Oh, there we go. So that's kind of a neat optical illusion. You see two pictures at the same time. I did another one here. I've got a pumpkin on this side. I've got a jack-o'-lantern face on this side. When I spin them around, that yellow might be hard to see. Can you see the jack-o'-lantern, the face on the pumpkin? I don't know if that yellow is really showing up. I can see the pumpkin, but I'm not sure I'm seeing the face on that one. But on my side, I can see it. I don't know about on your side. The camera might not be picking that up so well. But this is a really neat optical illusion. Um, what happens is, is when you spin the paper, you, the paper is going faster than your eyes can process what you're seeing. So by the time your eyes, you see the pumpkin, your eyes see the pumpkin, and then your brain says, oh, that's a pumpkin. It's already switched to the jack-o'-lantern face. So your eyes are seeing the jack-o'-lantern face as your brain is going pumpkin. And it's going so, so fast that your brain and your eyes kind of get mixed up. And your brain's job is to make sense out of what you see. So in order to make sense out of all of these flashing images, your brain actually puts the two pictures together into one. So I'm gonna show you how you can make your own optical illusion. And you guys can make the one that I'm making if you want. You can make one of these that I've already made or come up with your own optical illusions. It would be really neat to, to figure out what you can make. So the optical illusion I'm going to show you how to make, I took from the book here where there's a ghost floating in the barn. So I'm going to show you how to make your own optical illusion and the picture I'm going to make is the ghost floating in the barn. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to do this craft, like I said in the beginning, you're going to need at least one straw. I have two here, there will be two in your kit if you get to come and pick up a kit and a little piece of paper or cardstock. If you have a kit, you'll get two pieces of cardstock. You can use regular paper, but I liked the cardstock because it was a little bit thicker and it holds up better. So if you have some straws and cardstock at home, you definitely can use that. If you make it into the library to pick up a kit, this is what you'll get in your kit. Then you will also need, whoopsie, a pair of scissors. I have some crayons again, but you can use markers, colored pencils, whatever you want to do to draw on your paper, and a couple pieces of tape. So, what you need to do is take your cardstock, and you're going to decide what two images you want to do. So, for example, on this one, I drew a barn, and on the other side, I drew a ghost, because I want the ghost to look like it's in the barn. So to do that, I drew another barn first and I left the inside of the barn white. I first actually tried it with a black background so that it looked like it was dark inside the barn. It didn't work so well. So I recommend if you're gonna do something really, really dark, or actually I recommend don't do something really, really dark because it doesn't seem to work quite as well. So I drew my barn, leaving my white spot. So now what I wanna do is decide where I want my ghost to show up and I want him to show up inside my barn. So that means when I flip my cardstock over, I need to draw my ghost right in here. And this probably, yeah, no, this won't show up on the camera, but sometimes if you hold your cardstock up to the light, 
Yeah, I can't get the light to come through there. But if you hold it up to the light, I can see where my door is on my barn through my cardstock. So now I kind of know where I need to draw. So for this, for my ghost, I just need my black crayon. I'm going to make a little black ghosty. So I'm going to remind myself where my barn was. So there it is. So I need to make my ghost right in here. So I'm going to draw his head, give him some ghostly eyes. There's an arm. And then I'm going to do, here's kind of his body. Here's another arm. Add some little details in. I'm going to color that in so it looks kind of like his, his um, arms are kind of folded. There might be an arm in there. There's his bottom kind of waving in the wind as he flies on by. There we go. So there's my cute little ghosty. And my little ghosty. And if I turn it over, he should, he's a little bit big, but he should line up pretty well with my barn door. So the next thing you're going to do is take your straw and your scissors, and you always have your grown-ups permission with your scissors, and you might want your grown-ups help with this. If you kind of hold the straw a little bit flat, see how I kind of have it flat there? If you hold it a little bit flat, and if you want to put the straw in between the scissors, the whole straw. So if I put the whole straw in between the scissors and then cut, I'm going to cut a there you go, you can see how I have the scissors like right in the middle of the straw. And then if I just cut that, I end up cutting the top of the straw into two pieces. Camera focused, I'm not sure if it's focusing on this or not. It's hard to see. Um, so now I've got my two pieces and I've got a little slit in my straw. So what I'm going to do is take the picture that I just drew and put it in that slot in the straw. So can you guys see how I have half the straw on that side and half the straw on the other. So now here's where you need your tape. I like to just flatten the straw out a little bit. I think it stays on a little bit better that way. And then just take one little piece of tape and tape right over. Flip it over, do the same thing. And there you go. So now you can practice flipping your piece back and forth. Oh, that might actually be kind of working. Can you see the ghost in the barn? It may be, it may not show up quite as well on the camera. The camera really kind of makes things look a little bit different when you do things like this. But I hope you guys can see how that works. So there we are guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. See, I'm trying to see if it'll if it works. Like I said, um, practice with how fast you need to spin it to get it to show up. This one is not working very well on camera. When I look at it, oh wow, it works really well when I look at it. But when you start doing it with the camera, there might be a little bit. Like I said, the camera makes things a little bit wonky. So it may not show up quite as well for you guys. But do it in person, and I promise it will work, and it will look really cool. And like I said, experiment. You can do a ghost in a barn. I showed you guys I did the moon and a bat, so it looks like you've got a moon in the bat. I'm sorry, a bat in the moon. Silly me. And i got a jack-o'-lantern face and a pumpkin. That might look like a jack-o'-lantern. I might be there a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to come pick up your kits if you can. Kits are while supplies last. And I will see you guys all in next week with another fun experiment. Bye-bye.